and this is Sherelle Book, our fellow board member, and we are honored to be here to introduce a young man that has done this town proud in so many ways for so many years. Um, and I'm sorry with the reading glasses, but Hawthorne Wingo, who was our guest today, was born in Trine in 1947 and att attended Edmund Embury School uh, <coughs> in, in, um, <laughs> until the fall of 1964. In that fall, he was one of the first black students to be integrated into the all-white Trine High School. He became a tremendous basketball player for the Tribe Tigers, leading them to the Foothills Conference Tournament Champions with, with a high state ranking. I promise I'm going to get better. He personally was an all-conference player. He was recruited by several major schools, could not att attend them, but after graduating, came back to Trine and attended Friendship College in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Right. Then he came back to Trine, where he did uh, several jobs and played Textile League football. I don't know if any of you all remember, but in the early days, uh, the Textile Leagues had basketball teams, baseball teams, some of our Trine All-Stars that were the, uh, the baseball team in the 40s were also played in some of the textile leagues. And that is, and, and it was for some a stepping stone to the major leagues in both basketball and in baseball. Um, in 1968, he went to New York where he began to play in the city leagues. With his love and determination for basketball, his skills developed rapidly and he was invited to play in one of the premier leagues of New York. The competition was great with some NBA players playing in the summer league. His skills were so good by now, he could compete with the best in the world. And that fall, some of the New York Knicks players told their coach Holtzman that he needed to take a look at Hawthorne Wingo. Coach, coach Holtzman did and gave Hawthorne a contract to play with the New York Knicks, where he played for four years, including being on the NBA World Championship team in 1973. In 1976, yes. In 1976, he went to Europe where he played professionally in the European League and later in South America. He retired in 1983 and now resides in Brooklyn, New York. And we are really happy that he is here. And there are a couple of young men here that I think might like to say a few words about their friend and fellow teammate. And that's Bill and Bill. So if you <laughs> Which is Bill? <laughs> Before Bill, yeah, go ahead. No, Bill has yeah. Before Bill and Bill comes, I'd like to say welcome home. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, my grandmother always says that you give people their flowers while they're living. So that's what we're doing today. We're giving you giving you your flowers while you're living. Thank you very much. Excellent. So, Mr. Metcalf and Mr. Brock. You'd like to say a few words? <clears throat> these two young men have worked very, very hard mm -hmm. to arrange these, these events these few, few days, and we are proud of them and grateful to them. Yes. She said a few words, and uh, I've been the teacher for a few years, and that's hard for a teacher to do, to say a few words. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say, Mr. Hawthorne, come up and take it over. First of all, I'd like to say uh, happy Valentine's Day to yeah. all the beautiful people. And uh, it's a pleasure being home. I've been away for quite a few years now. But um, every place that I went, I always carried child in my heart. Always. Every place that I went, people would say, who are you? Where are you from? <laughs> so my name is Hawthorne Wingo, and I'm from Triumph, North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> and then they come with the questions, well, what, what's the largest yeah. city? What's that near? <laughs> I said, well, okay, I'm like 39 miles from Asheville, 27 miles from uh, Spartanburg, 
34 miles from Greenville, 4 miles from Edmond. <laughs> I just want to say it's really, it's really a, a, a wonderful feeling and a blessing that I'm here today. You know, I'm, I'm really touched. You know, I want to cry a little bit. <laughs> but I'm trying not to. I'm trying to okay. hold my composure. <laughs> you know, but I think this, this, you know, people in China. I love you all. I always have. As a kid growing up in this town, I can't think of a better place to ever have grown up in Triumph, North Carolina. You know, the people here were always good people, black, white, it didn't matter. Everybody was good. When I walked down the streets of Triumph and there's a kid growing up, <clears throat> I spoke to everyone. And everyone spoke back. So that's the way we are. It's always been like that, and it always will be. Um, my professional career, hey, I left here with the attitude of Wherever you go, there you are. So any place that I went, you know, like I was still in Tryon. You know, when I was sick thinking, I'm still in Tryon. And that carried me a lot of places. The other guys were not able to go. You know, I always worked hard. I played hard. And I had a good attitude. These are some of the things I learned by growing up in Tryon. Hardworking people. Good people. You know, they will give you a chance, you know, and, and, and I really enjoyed it. And playing on the Knicks, it was a good thing, you know what I mean? Because at that time, no one had ever done that. You know, I said, wow, <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> out of all the great athletes that come out of Tryon, believe it or not, Tryon has had a lot of great athletes. A lot of great athletes come out of Tryon, black and white. A whole lot I can think of the players, Don Fox, Johnny Miller, Edgar Hammond, uh, Duke Fisher, you know what I'm saying? Um, Lucy Metcalf. You know what I'm saying? Mike you know Johnson, Steve Massey, all the guys, my teammates, they're all up here. Bill Brock, Tommy Kell, you know what I'm saying? Mike Arthur Johnson. All these guys are right here more. John Douglas. You know, and the other people are here because we're trying and we stick together. And we love one another. You know, and that's all I have to say. You know, I want to get into the professional thing. Any questions you want to ask me, I'm open to that. And I like to say that I'm so happy to be back home. Thank you very much. <laughs> The Knicks were on top of the world. They were almost as good as the LA Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of battle back and forth back then. Tell us about the Knicks. What, what was it like playing for them back then? Oh man, it, every day was like, for me, it was a joy because I'm, I'm playing against my heroes. Because the first championship in the Knicks won in 1970, uh, I was a fan. I had just arrived in New York. And everybody followed that team, all New Yorkers, because all of the away games were on Channel 9, WRTV Channel 9. So they had a big following. So winning that first championship, I had a chance to get, you know, to see Willis Reed, Walt Frazier, no. Earl Monroe, Larry Lucas, David Butcher, yeah. Phil Jackson, Dick Barnett, you know, like all Hall of Famers. Red Holden was the coach, you know, so. When I had a chance to make the team and to play with these guys, every day it's like this. Every day I'm guarding David Busher, Bill Bradley, Jerry Lucas, Willis Reed, you know, Earl and Clyde. You know, it, 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 was, it was a beautiful thing. You know, I really enjoyed it. And uh, as a matter of fact, we beat the Lakers at for the championship. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, sorry. Yes. I do remember too listening uh, on the radio, and while all of those great players were there, when you stepped out on the court, the whole crowd was shouting your name. Yeah, and we yeah. heard it here on the radio all the way back here in the Carolinas. <laughs> <laughs> they were all shouting, Wingo, Wingo, Wingo. <laughs> <laughs> Were you also a 
I guessed on a couple of talk shows on television. Mm. Oh, come on now. No, I, I did a couple of commercials. A couple of commercials. commercials. You know, I did one with Swift Premium Frank. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did one for Tremont Shoes. Because it was for, I did it with the midget sitting in my lap. <laughs> Tremont Shoes. The shoes for the small guy and the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. so, so what do you think about the way the little town looks now as opposed to when you left it? Oh wow, Charm is expanded, you know, it's just it's it's almost like a new town. You know, the, the people are the same. I can see that the people are the same, you know, which is good. You know, but it just, just it looks so good, you know. A lot of places uh, Mr. Metcalf was taking me around and everything. I didn't recognize a lot of places because I'm thinking about the old Triangle. And I said, well, so-and-so used to be there. Yeah, and this way over here was this place over here. But it's not there anymore. But, uh, you know, sometimes change is, is good. You know, and, and I haven't had really a chance to get to know, you know, any of the, the, the people, you know, the new people. But from what I'm hearing, everything is going well, and that's good. All right. Can you, can you tell us a little about a little bit about some of those stories uh, when you were doing those initial pickup games with guys like Duke Fisher and some of those boys? I remember that was the story. I read, read a little bit about. It. Right. Okay, sir. Um, yeah, I remember as a kid, like um, we lived at uh, on Lockhart Road, and the old gym was right around the corner from our house. And uh, one afternoon, uh, uh, Bill Brown, a friend of mine, lived down there close to me. He came and said. I oh, thought, come on, man. So they ran out to the old gym. They run there playing. Let's go watch. So we went out to the old gym. And uh, we walked in the door. We stand over in the corner. Like, we tried to, I guess we thought we were sneaking in. <laughs> and there was a big guy that said, Hey, how you guys doing? It was Duke, Duke Fisher. Say, Hey, how you guys doing, man? Say, Hey, we all right. Hey, Duke. Everybody knew Duke around town because Duke was a star. Duke was a bona fide star and a great person, a great person. So Duke said, come on in, man, you guys come and play. You need a couple of players. So we went out and played. David, uh, David Crawford, Bill Brown, and myself. And uh, we worked out with this Duke, um, let me see, Duke, Zorro, um, Cal McKinney, and uh, maybe Miss, Mr. Blue's son. I can't think, Jerry Blue, I think Mr. Blue, I can't think of his name right now. And we worked out that that something that you know that afternoon, and he said tomorrow we'll be out here again. So the following day we came out, we played. So we played all that summer at the old gym with Duke and those guys. You know, and, and, but, but, you know, that little guy that should have been like in the pros ahead of me before my time came with Duke Fisher. You know, he had a you know a bad accident, which is which is very bad. You know, it hurt me when that happened to him. Oh, Duke was, he was, he was a great basketball player. He was great. He was a great player. He, you know, I think he was a freshman in University of North Carolina at that time. I think he was there with Doug Moore and uh, Larry Brown and those guys. With all those guys that on to be pro professional players. He was on that uh, freshman team. But uh, he didn't make it, you know, because he was, uh, it, it was a bad, bad accident, you know. It was very unfortunate that that happened. You know. uh, any other questions? <laughs> okay, in that case, I'll pass it back to Mr. Lucy. No, 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 no. I think the Rucker story is tremendous. Uh, tell, tell them all about the Rucker Park and how you made it and how you made it there. And, uh, oh, okay. A little bit about Peter Bessie. Okay, uh, I was playing at the. Well, I was playing on the Hall and Wizards at the time. This team right here, the Hall and Wizards, which would be playing Sunday afternoon at 2.30, you know? And, uh, and we have tickets available. <laughs> <laughs> of course, for you, though. Yeah, yeah. No problem. And um, so we were playing upstate and during the summers. The Wizards would go up to all the summer camps up in Monticello, New York, White Lake, Green Lake. This is upstate New York. And we would go to all the summer camps and put on shows for the kids at the summer camps. So we went up, we was up there for like maybe three weeks, and we came back to New York City for a little break. 
you know, because it's hard work playing two or three games a day at these camps. And uh, we went up to the Rucker Tournament. And I said, wow, this is nice. I was, I was impressed. And a lot of good players were playing up there. The Knicks were playing up there. Um, and Charlie Scott from the University of North Carolina was up there. Um, Dean Memminger from the Knicks. Um, Dr. J, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, <laughs> Pee Wee Kirkland, Joe Hammond, who were playground legends. They were playing up there. Uh, Earl Manning Goat, another playground legend, was playing up there. Herman Helicopter. And uh, I enjoyed it. So I left there and I went back up to the summer camp. We finished up. And then to come back to winter and we played. I played with the Wizards during the winter. And the summer came around and we were getting ready to go away to the summer camps again. And um, Howie Davis said, well, we'll be leaving uh, Wednesday. I said, Howie, I won't be leaving. He said, what do you mean? I said, I'm going to play at the Rucker this year. So I went down to Rucker Park and I started playing. I played with a team called the Sports Foundation. We had, um, let me see, we had Dean Memminger, uh, Bill Chandler from Martin University of North Carolina, a guy named Dexter Westbrook from Providence. Played with Jimmy Walker when he was there. And uh, we were playing against two guys like Dr. J, Dave Cowens, Tiny Archibald, Bob Love, uh, Willis Reed, Wolf Frazier, Earl of Pearl Monroe. All of the pros in the song, you can see the pick up there. It was better than the games in the garden. It was free. <laughs> you just walk in the park, and everybody's playing, packed with people. And um, so I started playing, and I was playing very well against these guys, but no one knew who I was at that time. So like Dave Starworth and uh, Amy Bryant, after we played them, we didn't win, but we played them well. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he came up and he said, uh, who are you? I told him, I said, Hawthorne oh, Wingo, I'm in Triad, North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> I always got to have a He said, uh, well, who do you play for? I said, I don't play for anyone. He said, well, you never played that stuff. I went to Junior College for two years, and I dropped out, and I came to New York, and I played with the Wizards for a little while. And now and then, I'm just, just trying to hook up with the team if I can. So I said, okay. So I, we continued to play all summer. And each game, I kept getting better and better. We came up and played against Dr. J. Dr. J, he was great. Dave Collins, Tiny Archibald, all these guys. And if you look at the stats, my stats were good. And then, um, so I look in the stands, and I see Dick Barnett, Dick McGuire, and uh, Emmy Bryant, you know, from the Knicks organization, Dick McGuire, who was a scout at that time, a former NBA player, and then um, and, um, Dick Barnett, you know, who was like, you know, he's, he's like the assistant coach. So um, they came to scout me, so after the game, they were waiting around, and they talked to him. I had another good game, 30 points, 15, 16 rebounds. So they said, well, Red, why don't you come out to the garden? And then he wants to talk to you. So I went out to the garden and I met with Red, and he was asking, he said, What's your name? Arthur Wingo. <laughs> I said, Where are you from? China, North Carolina. <laughs> all of you know. He said, um, he said Well, Wingo said, How old are you? I told him my age. He said, Well, this is what I want to do with you. He said, um, You know, you can't go to the pros for so two more years because you played two years of junior college. You have to wait till your class graduates. They didn't have the hardship at that time where you go straight from high school. So you have to wait until um, your class graduates so you can come to the pros. But we would like for you to play in the Eastern League in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And we, can, we can't pay you a lot of money. I said, we can give you $17,000. <laughs> 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 so I so I went down in, in, the, in the Eastern League and I played down in Allentown. And um, first year I, I played all right. And then the next year I went back to see Red again. He said, You're Wingy, now I'm Wingy. Wingy, yeah. he said, Wingy, he said, uh, you had a good year, man. He said, uh, you, you, you're getting better. He said, You know, you got another year left. I said, Yeah, I know, coach. He said, um, What I like to do is, like, we like to give you um, $50,000 contract, two years guaranteed. And whether you play with the Knicks or not, you're going to get this money. You know, I said, okay, coach. So I went back to the East and I played. And this year we won the championship. And uh, I was voted the most valuable player. And uh, so I came back to camp again. Right? He said, Wayne, he said, you had a great year. He said, um, 
But the only thing is, say everybody on the team, there's 12 guys at this time, they say everybody has a no good contract. He said, what are we going to do with you? He said, but, you, but you're going to get paid anyway, right? I said, yeah, you told me that. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, well, what I want you to do is go back to the Eastern League and play. He said, and he said, I want you to listen to what I'm saying. He said, just because the guy has a no-cut contract doesn't necessarily mean that he will be on the team. It just means that we will look at him a little longer. So I went back to the Eastern League again. I'm still playing down there. And then uh, this was in October. And in uh, February, he called me back up again. And they sent down their number one draft choice to the Eastern League and brought me up. At that time, his name was Tom Riker from the University of South Carolina. He was the number one draft choice. But they sent him down and brought me up. And I was in the championship run. That's how I finished out my first year on the Knicks. Mm -hmm. yeah, good, man. I'm going to tell a little story about you. Yeah. Over the, we've been doing this for about a year, trying to plan something, Hawthorne coming back, and a lot of stories have been told to me about Hawthorne. The one I'm caught my eye real good is he's a writer, in fact, he's in the States, Smith Hall of Fame uh, as a writer. His name is Peter Vesey. And it's in the book, uh, by the way, we, we have printed some books called The Amazing Story of Hawthorne Wingo. Hopefully I'll probably get one. But in his uh, letter to me, he told me about a guy named Bob Love. I think I'll know the name, Bob. Hopefully you do. He's a professional player. And Peter Vesey at Rucker, he sponsored a team. And I think maybe he played on a team some, but he, he sponsored a team. And this Sunday, they having all these good teams in. Uh, Peter Vesey called Bob Love and offered big time money to come in and play. Because Rucker, for I understand, is a highlight of basketball in New York for years. <coughs> so he get uh, Bob Love, pays him to come in, and uh, sure enough, they play uh, Hawthorne's team. And uh, sure enough, <coughs> Hawthorne ended up guarding Bob Love. <laughs> up and down the court they go, up and down the court. And back a short, uh, long story short, it's near the end of the game, and uh, Hawthorne done stuffed him about eight times. <laughs> he couldn't do nothing with Hawthorne. And here's a, he went on to be an uh, all star at NBA, yeah, yeah, I'm sure he was an all star at NBA. And uh, he came over there near the end of the game, he said, Bingo, bingo, on and on. I can't say what he said now. <laughs> he said, Who is this Wingo? Hawthorne doesn't talk him a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> him a lesson. So, uh, and let me say one other thing. Uh, in Rucker, they have what they call the top 50 of all time. You looking at one of them. He in the top 50, the Rucker League. So. Well, does anybody I wanna... else have any questions? Yes, yes, ma'am. Julie Brock, class of '72. Will you be my Valentine? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a couple of things that I'd like to give to Hawthorne. This is the banner that has been on the on the clock tower announcing uh, the program here, which we have been so pleased to have. And this this is for you to take home. Oh, thank you. May I and see it? There is a this is a little bag of goodies from the museum. I have no idea what's in there. But I put my hand in there and nothing bit me, sorry. <laughs> but it's just a few little little tokens for you to remember us by. We are so grateful that you were willing to spend time with us today. And 
we hope you are back and trying a lot more. Okay. Yeah, definitely. You know, I want to thank you people for having me, and, and I'm so happy to see all of you. I love well, you. I love you. I love you. Well, we love you too. <laughs>